The Bath 2 PFF Women's Cup 2022 glory is down to one final match. Will it be Moraita? Will it be Diliman? Good evening and welcome to the PFF National Training Center in Carmona, Cavite, the home of the PFF Women's Cup. And tonight, we are going to crown the deserving winner after 90 minutes or so. Glad to have you join us on this evening. Levi Verora on the call. Nanonood po kayo mula sa ating Facebook and YouTube platforms. UP and and FEU on hand, one match remaining. Punta muna tayo sa UP. What they had to say in the pre-match pageantries. Coach, uh, two quick questions lang. First time you met FEU, they scored two quick goals in the first half. Mm -hmm. What's going to be different uh, this time around? Um, we're just going to build on from what we... Um, We've done, uh, especially on the defensive end against Kaya, no? um, and then our ability to contain the, their key players because uh, one objective that we had during that first meeting was really to contain Tolentin, um, but she was able to score no? but off a, off a corner. And hopefully we will be able to keep the ball better no? and um, penetrate their, their back line so as to put pressure uh, on their team um, and um, hopefully we can stretch them out. Uh, will the external situations uh, arriving quite a bit late here yeah, yeah. affect the team drastically or not? Um, I hope I, uh, I hope not. No, um, it's been a long ride. No, we, we didn't expect such horrible traffic. But um, I mean, these these girls are, are very mentally strong. So uh, I hope they 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 can overcome the the what we had to go through to get here. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. That was, of course, Coach Anto Gonzalez of the UP Fighting Maroons. Dumako naman tayo sa panig ng FEU Coach Let Dimson. Nakausap natin before the match. Here's what she had to say. Coach, this is it. This is the finals. Um, no elimination round. Nag 2-0 uh, kayo against UP. Early goals, first half, and then kinontrol nyo na from there. Do you expect anything different from UP ngayong finals? Um, siguro ano same kasi since na yung preparations and then yung this yung length ng days going to the final so i think ayun lang din so maybe uh, may mga bagong ano lang like yung mga individual tasking for individual players so i think ayun lang yung magbabago but with regarding sa play so mahirap siya sa trabahuhin so that's why yung yung pina-expect namin is same play lang ng ginawa ng UP before Ah, uh, I think pareho lang yan. So, uh, magbe-base na lang talaga yan kung ano yung focus ng concentra yung concentration ng training going to the finals. And um, since na nag yes, sabi natin na nag nag shootout sila, but again, may recovery time pa rin. So, kung makuha ng teams yon na uh, within 42 hours na naka-recover yung team, I think makaka makaka balik sila in 100%. Uh, expected na so since ginawa nila from ano game against Kaya na na solid yung defense yung likod nila nag-add sila ng another player so i think uh, same play ang gagawin nila with FAU but again uh, against going against UP uh, preparation talaga namin is to strengthen yung attack namin in front so hopefully magwork the university of the philippines versus far Eastern University for all the marbles. Pag nagbalik po kami, it's going to be the official march in and kick off.
And here we go. The players are ready. The officials are ready. And in just a few moments, it's going to be UP and FEU shown on your screens right now, of course, as they make the traditional handshake. UP in their all white, FEU in their signature green and gold. For the University of the Philippines, familiar faces in the starters. Colin Acelo, the goalkeeper. You have Regine Chua, Kate Dabalos, Drea Montilla, Munich Muring, Jen Baroin, Cara Cachero, Kamea Mangrobang. The captain is Eliza Ube, Colin Riazzo, and Daniel Napisa. Sa kabilang panig for the Lady Tamaraos, Jessamay Lehayan, the goalkeeper. Erma Balakua will assume a different position here in Dai Tolentin, of course. Janli Vontamillas, Laika Cuenco, Kat Magbitang, Kaila Doctora, Laihani Kayabyab, Jonela Albino, Jen Tulabing, and Regine Rebosura. In just a few moments, we will kick off as our captains, Alaysa Ube on your left and Indai Tolentin on your right, receiving the final instructions from our referee, Timothy De Castro, assisted by Merlo Albano, Rizalyn Torres, the fourth official is Jesus Abogado, your match commissioner is Maha Año. The first time these two teams met, it was FEU victorious 2-0. And in that match, it was Indaito Latin scoring in the third minute, followed by another goal from Regine Rebusura in the 37th. And FEU took control from there, a 2-0 victory. And that is something that, of course, the UP Fighting Maroons would love to reverse this time around we are just a minute away from kickoff both UP and FEU in their final huddles prior to the start as we take a good look at UP on your screens again in all white they beat Kaya FC Iloilo by way of such an intriguing, exhilarating penalty shootout. And that was the road to the final. In contrast, Far Eastern University took care of business against Tuloy FC. 3-0 was the score. Three different scorers for Coach Let Dim Zone. And now all that matters is the match. That is about to begin. Much has been said about their preparation, about what is at stake, about how they got here. But in the end, it's going to be UP and FEU. And the match at hand. And here we go. It is go time here inside the PFF National Trading Center in Carmona, Cavite. Colleen Riasso kicks us all off. UP playing left to right as they get the first crack in this match. FEU in green and gold playing right to left. Ube goes to Riasso right away. Nipiza, Chua, and it looks like FEU has one possession, and it's Tolentin 
threading the needle right away, but Acelo will collect, giving her her first contact for this match. Colleen Acelo, of course, one of the heroes in that penalty kickout. UP and Kaya, when she saved one against no less than Ina Palacios. And what a way to start this contest for both sides. You can feel the tense atmosphere on your screens. Both of them wasting no time. Jessamay Lehayan, of course, a clean sheet against Tuloy. Will she do the same again tonight? FEU now trying to be more cautious and patient as they bring the ball to their attacking half. Doctora. Tamea Mangrobang offers a bit of effort there. Tolentin. And the first whistle after kickoff as someone falls down momentarily on the part of FEU. Like uh, Jane Cuenco goes to her left, it is Tolentin. Tries to send it into the box. But the rest of the Lady Tamaraus unable to attend. Boy, we are just in the first four minutes of this match. And already, the intensity is on a high. Fittingly so, it is the final, just one match. It is the final match day of the PFF Women's Cup 2022. And tonight, we will crown a new winner. Doctora will control Tolentin. A bit of a miscommunication there. They discussed things over. Had the intent to send it to Katrina Magbitang. FEU, of course, will not fall back just yet they offer a bit of pressure from their half FEU of course will not but during that fall entanglement Piasso kinapitan sa likod and ball won back by UP this is Baroin and she and Regine Chua hindi rin nagkaintindihan doon of course Jennifer Baroin adjudged as the player of the match against Kaya, just holding her ground from her position in the back line to at least force the mill mill scoreline after 120 minutes. Both UP and FEU, the tactical chess match, of course, that is also unfolding right before our very eyes. Coach Anto Gonzalez, Coach Let Dimzon, pillars of the sport, no less, if you would ask. Trying to anchor their respective teams here in the final. Tolentin 
such activity from her and the ground that she covers from her position as quite an attacking midfielder, if you'd ask. It's about really involving herself whenever the chance presents. Nepiza. Ube will not be able to control as it is a throw in for FEU. Quick clearance for the Fighting Maroons. And a lapse here for FEU as Riasso makes her run, but no numbers for Diliman. Quickly, five players in green and gold. Take it back. Duran sends it to the back once again. Early on, it's FEU with the bigger share of possessions here. Deep into the box. But it seems UP is able to react. We'll see that once again. Just flicking it towards the on-rushing Nick Duran. Although no connection was established. Fortunate moment there for UP. Could have easily slid their way. Baro in. Mangrobang. Look at the pressure from FEU early on. As they are eager to get into their offensive attacks and establish rhythm early. The same way they did during the elimination round. Once again, when these two teams met the first time, it was Inday Tolentin scoring in the third minute, followed by Regine Rebusura in the 37th. FAU took that one 2 0. UP want to bounce back and, of course, want to win it all. It is just one more match before we conclude this tournament. Eight teams down to two. Kaya won third place earlier against Tuloy FC. Just a 1-0 victory with Estong Ramores scoring late in the 83rd. Well, Effie, you just being highly physical right here and taking it to UP. Doctora. Moving it to the right side. Again, just a deliberate, methodical approach for FEU. Trying to build from the back. Coach Let Dimson shouting her instructions from their technical area. UP clears as it seemed FEU did not get what they want but the activity of Tolentin once again trying to hit the 1-2 Kayabiab was there it will be cleared by UP but you can just sense the pressure from FEU early on as we are past our 10 minute mark couple of players tumbling over and now Riaso. that one targeting Ube And now finally, UP wins control. But Riasso will send a long one. Perhaps ill-advised for Drea Montilla. May halong pagmamadali ang UP. It has been FEU in control of the possessions department. 
at least in the first 11 minutes of this contest. It's been that kind of a contest as well for UP back in the semifinal against Kaya. Although they did not concede, it was clear that Kaya was dominating the match in terms of possession and had more chances, more corners, you name it. And so, of course, you wonder as we also get a good look at Coach Anto Gonzalez from UP, their longtime mentor, led the women's side to one UAAP title back during the era of the Huff sisters. Ball goes out. And again, we have seen more action from the left side of the field early on. And this match, of course, will continue to unfold. It's been FAU controlling the trend. Muring. Again, UP just all sorts of tentative here. Not the ideal start you want in a final where, of course, the championship is at stake. Gold medals and the beautiful trophy are just right beside this, actually, from our broadcast booth. As we take a good look at Colleen Acello choosing. Thirteen minutes in. Once again, we thank you all for joining us on this Saturday evening here in Carmona, Cavite, the PFF National Training Center, which has been the home for all but one match day of your PFF Women's Cup 2022. We opened last November 5, and it all comes down to this. To the middle they go against traffic. De Pisa tries to bother. They go side by side. The shot is wide. Elisa Ube trying to challenge from the side. We'll see that one more time. A bit of a nudge. And Acelo got a touch. Corner for FEU, the first for either team. It's going to be one of the goal scorers as whistle is blown. It's going to be a retake here. Referee yet to sort things out. Well, you love the enthusiasm from Magbitang. Katrina Magbitang, one of the three goal scorers from the semifinal against Tuloy. Kayabyab and Tulintin, of course, being the other two. Ube makes a run for that one. Riaso will support. UP find themselves in perhaps a position to finally start things in their attacking third. It gets delayed right away. As this is a coach, let Dimzon directing, orchestrating as the case for coach Anto. Flag is up. Poor control on the part of Riazo. It will go back to FEU. Short-lived moments in the right side of the field. As that is Coach Anto Gonzalez, the longtime mentor for UP. It's 
it came down to these two sides, these two teams who are part of the UAAP football tournament. Part of four UAAP schools which saw action here, Ateneo and USD of course, the other two. Whistle is finally blown as someone from FEU has ran out of real estate. That is in Daitolentin. As Baroin made the chase and relatively easy call to make. Obviously, a match of this magnitude, UP and FEU, quite even so far. It might go the distance. We are allowed seven substitutes for each team, seven changes. And you have to accomplish them in three opportunities, excluding. And that is the opening goal! A lapse from the Fighting Maroons and Far Eastern University will make them pay. Layani Kayabyab, the pressure pays off for FEU. In the 18th minute for player number 18. Look at them stay their ground, pressuring the back line of UP. And here on this pass, it was just a flick, and that was enough for Kayabyab. This is a dream start for FEU, and they are in the driver's seat early on, reminiscent of the first match between UP and FEU. The Lady Tamaraus strike first in the first half as they charge their way to this one goal separation boy just when we were discussing substitutes and perhaps a match like this might go the distance there's always a possibility but as it stands now feu in command jessame lehayan getting involved in the play Riaso trying to press, but on her own, no support from UP. As a player is down on the field from UP, that is Montilla. Kamea Mangrobang. Attending to one of her teammates. Mundilia shakes it off. We continue with the first half here, 20 minutes in. PFF Women's Cup 2022 final. UP and FEU, the Far Eastern University women's team are able to score the opening goal. The breakthrough coming off a lapse from UP in the biggest of stages, no less. Where the margin, the room for error should be minimized, if not totally eliminated. And FEU certainly made them pay. UP couldn't quite get into those counters, Mangrobang. But it will be a pass back for the keeper. So much directing. Lea Yan way outside of her area. FEU very fortunate that UP has not caught up. They have control for now. Ube being chased by two. 
And the clearance for FEU. Now an opportunity for UP to create Riasso. Tiptoeing just near the area and a bit of a shot. If you'd consider it that way from distance, that was Munich Mudding. She did have some space here and some room. But couldn't get quite the angle. From about 25 yards out. FEU will try to build. Nipiza does a great job to dispossess. But could only hold on to that for a few seconds. Still FEU. The Lady Tamaraus, the pride of Moraita. That was intended for Mangrobang, but a great way to intervene into that path of the ball. Good intention on the part of the Fighting Maroons. We are already halfway into our first half, 23 minutes. Regine Chua, Jen Baroin, part of the right side of that back line. No support for FEU that time around. Muring once again, the header. Still FEU inside the box. UP has to be more careful here. They go to the ground for that shot. It was just deflected at the last moment. But you should never, of course, settle for those dusty moments inside the penalty area. Riasso able to control with two touches. Put some aerial into that one for Nepisa. UP fights back to regain control, but Ube is unable to keep it inside of the pitch. Some pressure from UP. We mentioned that again, there have been four UAAP teams competing in this tournament, joining Tuloy, Azuri. Kaya, FC Iloilo, and Stallion. And this is definitely beneficial for their continuing preparation. Again, for the UAAP tournament. UP and FEU. You can argue that these two teams now with the head start getting some 11 aside experience some valuable precision games into their bag corner for FAU the second and it's going to be Kayabiab the goal scorer to deliver with some good aerial into that when it makes contact with Tolentin the shot is wide, difficult angle to create. But still the effort for FEU, commendable. That was Jen Tulabing. 
It makes initial contact with Tolentin and then just a difficult angle for Tulabing as they desperately try to chase that within a split second. They try to thread the needle. Ube. It's met beautifully by the FEU defender. It's been quite the intense affair that we expected so far. And if you're just joining us, Far Eastern University already with the advantage here. A 1-0 cushion. 18th minute incursion from Laihani Kayabyab. And that is the difference so far between these two sides in this final. The PFF Women's Cup 2022 Championship match. Coming to you live from the PFF National Training Center here in Carmona, Cavite. Lehayan involves herself in the play once again. FEU discussed from the back. Fontamillas. We've seen Fontamillas assume the left back role. From the semi-finals, she's uh, in a slightly different position to open this match. And they charge forward, right flank. Lob inside. Oh, shot that was, apparently. But it goes way above from Kayabyab. We'll see that once again from distance, West Kayabyab. Well, when they see it, they will take it. That's for sure. Oh, these FEU Lady Tamaraos are brave. You know, uh, we're, we're not sure if you hear it in the background, but lots of people have come on to watch here live inside our venue. Both UP and FEU, the supporters, spectators, have made their time here inside the PFF National Training Center. Taking into consideration, of course, everything that has happened. The torrential rains this afternoon. Well, the weather condition has uh, improved a lot significantly here. Lehayan once again going out of her area. Riaso making a chase for a moment. But there will be no challenges that time around. Chua does her best to deflect and delay this potential chance once again. They are able to lob it inside the box. And UP's defense continuing to get rattled here as we have just passed The 30th minute, the half hour mark of this affair. And you see them on the uh, bottom right part of your screens right now. Again, the fans, they've come on in. 
with their inflatables, UP side with their drums, and such a festive atmosphere here inside the uh, PFF National Training Center. Fitting for a finale, and that is a good look of the situation right now. Once again, a lot of people, a lot of spectators have decided to make their way here to Carbona Cavite and support both FEU and UP. Ball stays in play, but the momentum of one of the players from FEU, of course, is unable to turn that into something more dangerous, more feisty for UP. Doctora is able to track it back down. Tolentin will survey the field. It ricochets off a UP player. And they take their time. Magbitang as it is cleared for now. But these possessions are just long for FEU as Cuenco will retrieve possession for the green and gold. Dabalos able to get into the path and bother Treya Duran loses control. But if you're UP, again, you have to be quicker with these decision-making situations. Acelo will give it to Dabalos against pressure once again. They are just being rattled here, UP. They've already conceded one. It is not looking good so far. Far Eastern University, they have their imprints all over this match. As we have a bit of a stoppage here. Once again, your referee is Timothy De Castro. The assistants are Merlo Albano and Rizalyn Torres. Jesus Abogado is the fourth official. Your match commissioner is Maha Año. A long ball that is just poked away by Acelo, who will have to return to her area. Dabalos. And it looks like Junela Albino will be called for that. Here is the effort. Baro in against all sorts of pressure here. And this is, if anything, just a test of character as well for the Fighting Maroods. If they will let the pressure get into their nerves. If you're just joining us, UP arrived here at around 6.40, 6.50 p.m. with kickoff set at 6, 7.30. There's a bit of a confusion there. And UP is definitely in all sorts of this combobulation as Acelo will finally capture that in midair. It doesn't seem 
that they're in sync. It's been that kind of a trend so far, 36 minutes into the first half. Potential counter here for the Fighting Maroons. Not enough numbers there for Daniel Nepiza as FEU is able to recover right away. Perhaps the closest they have gotten to at least turning something into something positive. Mring, Ube will send it back to Mring. They try to make the connection to Mangrobang. That is Kamea Mangrobang. And that effort will pay off somehow for the Fighting Maroons. They take a throw in here. But in the ensuing effort, trying to target Riaso, ball goes out into a goal kick for FEU. UB is asked to stay high. That's what we're hearing from Coach Anto Gonzalez right now. And there they are, just establishing their presence here. Mangrobang is unable to execute a fine cross, but FEU concede a corner. Steadily, UP, finally, some semblance of rhythm here. Well, someone from UP had their back turned, but a second ball, Baroin hesitates for a moment. Decides to give it to Montilla. Ube. Nepisa. Still UP. Nepisa. And now they have to be careful as this could transition into a counter attack for FEU. Tolentin. And now UP will recover. UP in white, FAU in green and gold. A trademark colorway for the school. Tolentin to her left. But UP has recovered. They thread the needle. To the middle and UP will retake. Possession as it is cleared. It's been an encouraging last five minutes for UP, to say the least. Looks like we have entered a hydration break as we approach the 48 minutes. Far Eastern University in control with a 1 0 lead. Blaihani Kayabyab, who also scored. In the semi-final against Tuloy, has once again found the back of the net in the 18th minute. And that gave FEU this separation that they have. 1-0 is the score. Colleen Riasso, player number 37 for UP. And the rest of her teammates will have to find a way to equalize and pull even. We continue the action here. 
in the final. Mangrobang. Dabalos. Ube wants it. The pizza. And the whistle is blown. Extending her leg ever so slightly as they jockey for position. And FEU in a bit of a situation here, momentarily down to 10 women. As uh, Layani Kayabyab, the very same person who is the goal scorer for the evening, is out of the pitch as we speak. FEU. Once again, momentarily down to 10. Is still able to thread that needle inside the box. It's going to be a challenge here for Acelo. She deflects on the rebound, FEU. Will run out of space, but let's see a good look at that Rebusura. Then it was eventually chased down by Magbitang who ran out of space. Altice has come on in to replace. Looks like Laihani Kayabyab. Mela Altice. And now she gets her first touch. Making a fine run into that left flank. But is unable to keep the ball in play, did she? I'll play on, says the referee. About two more minutes before the conclusion of the first half. So such an anticlimactic evening for Loyani Kayabyab, scoring the only goal of the match so far. But she will have to call it a night early. Owing to a situation. Well, if anything, FEU has been in absolute control of this first half. The scoreline perhaps does not show that in terms of the conversions. But they have UP's number so far. About a minute remaining. And at a time before we conclude the first half of this final. Immediate whistle blown by our referee as... Looks like that was Muring. Took the brunt of... The collision. That was Altice and Moring. Accidental contact. Jennifer Baroin, the defender. Once again, UP arriving quite late here about uh, 6 40 6 50 p.m. with kickoff set for 7 30 two minutes of additional time confirmed by our fourth official so two more minutes here and if you're UB obviously you have to take into your halftime huddle this hole that they have to overcome. Cara Gachero makes the denial. A controlled challenge. But it will still be a corner for FEU.
Mel Altice will issue this ball. Some good aerial to that one. Header for Indai Tolitin. Sends it downward, but perhaps too much. Altice is out. Presumably just a minute remaining in the first half. Chua. And even on that throw in, UP just couldn't get anything to be in sync. Chua immediately apologizing to Kameya Mangrobang. And now this could be the final attempt for FEU in the first half. Baroin able to attend to that. It is cleared once again. So there's going to be a bit of a leeway here. Altice. You see those two fighting Maroons on the background. Who make that three. Expect Yubi to make some changes. After the intermission. Anytime now our crew chief might blow his whistle to signal the end of the first half. FEU in command, 1-0 against UP. And that is the end of the first half. Layani Kayabyab with the flick in the 18th giving Far Eastern University the lead. The green and gold will take with them a 1-0 cushion into their break. As we will return with more action in the PFF Women's Cup 2022 championship match when we return.
At nagbabalik po tayo mula dito sa PFF National Training Center in Carmona, Cavite. Where as it stands, Far Eastern University has a 1-0 advantage over the University of the Philippines. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. And he tries to bother Far Eastern they University side by side. had team seven the changes. advantage throughout the first and half, have to not just with the lead, but also three opportunities the excluding of the volume of And that is and the open that is the opening from the goal fighting right maroons and Far, Far Eastern, Eastern University. University. Riaso, a lapse. Tiptoeing just near the area to that and you have the goal scorer to and deliver. FEU also some good had aerial more into that corners one. It makes contact with in that department. In that particular cross, of a course. Long ball that is just quite a away busy evening so by far. Asel Colleen Acello, the goalkeeper for UP. We take a good look at the situation here inside our venue with just moments. To go before the start of the second half. Three changes for the UP Fighting Maroons. Kim, Eugene, Jazz Bora, the hero from the semifinal. And Yana Yatko. All making their respective entries. And we open the second half. FEU and UB. Far Eastern University now playing from left to right in their signature green and gold. UP, of course, in all white, contrasting. Still 45 minutes. And change for UP to try and equalize and extend this match. But as it stands, of course, your Lady Tamaraus have the advantage. And they will try to build on from what they accomplished in the first half. Maraming salamat sa kanilang pagtutok. This is the... Championship match. He sent a potential cross which was immediately met by Colleen Acelo. That was Altice. If you're UP, you can't afford to just ball watch on the part of the defenders. Eliza Ube. Whistle is blown. We thank you all for joining us. Let's just go over our live viewers from our Facebook page. We have Rosjel Acasio, Alma Balacqua, both rooting for FEU. Carla Moreno rooting for UP. Laika May Gepesau also joining us, as well as May Mendanyo. From distance. Well, Indai Tolentin has a penchant for that. That is a fact that we can establish. Whistle was blown. Gives us another look at this. From way out. Trying to be ambitious, but not against Acelo. Muring to Baroin. Again, some adjustments from UP, but that backline stays the same. Cachero. They send it to Acelo as they desperately try to preserve this possession. And the keeper. Lehayan. Will make herself involved in the play. Some changes 
in the midfield. And up front for the Fighting Maroons. Kim, Eugene, Jazzy, Bora. As we saw, both uh, Ube and her defender get entangled for a while. Dabalos will send one straight into the midst of Lehayan. Early moments of the second half, we pick up right where we left off. In the first half. Just one goal separating these two squads. Layani Kayabyab charging for FEU. Pouncing on an errant pass from the UP back line. And that converted into... The only goal of the match so far. Well, speaking of Kayabyab, she is not part of the 11 on the floor for FEU anymore. As uh, she was replaced. And... Not the best of throw-ins there for FEU. Uncharacteristic mistake to make. Although they win it back easily. He switch in direction. They thread the needle. But Baroin will shadow as Acelo approaches. Sends it into the midfield. It barely grazes past Riaso. Altice against Moring. Go to the opposite side. Magbitak stays onside. And finally, on the third try for UP, after two perhaps not the best of quality clearances, the Pisa. Leaps just to get to that. And that sequence will end for FEU. That one perhaps intended for Bora. Tabalos got in the way. Ube. Foot race between her. And Fontamillas. And a good effort from Ube to win possession for the Fighting Maroons. And the Pisa, for a split second, loses her balance, lost her footing, and also the possession for UP. A missed opportunity there. As they were already in their attacking half, trying to build something. 52 minutes into this match. Munich Mering and Regine Rebosura from FEU. Once again, this is your PFF Women's Cup 2022 championship match. This is the final match day. And this is looking to be a good opportunity for FEU. It is in Daitolent 10. Conceded. Baroin, a corner for FEU. We'll see that once again. Corner taken short. They scramble for control. Another fine touch. As was the case for UP against Kaya, they couldn't build from the back. 
And against an FEU team that has given them all sorts of fits and problems with their pressing. It's been quite a difficult evening for the Fighting Maroons as Acelo will rush to dive and keep the score line the same. Another errant pass which led to this shot by Albino. UP dodged a bullet that time. Riasso jockeying for position. And FEU will continue with their relentless attack. Tolentin will send it to Rebusura. And now the shot. Well, momentarily, Acelo was able to stop the power of that pole. And right in time, picks it up. FEU, they can just sense it right here. Now an obvious shove from... That was player number 17. Kyla Doctora against Riasso. But this was the shot earlier. And then Acelo... Might have went between, in between her legs. And then again, the... Push by Doctora from behind. <laughs> FEU will continue to run. Collected by the keeper. But she sends it to an area where there were no white shirts. Ube fortunate to have won that. Dabalos. Well, FEU still seizing control. They have that fallen back. Fontamillas. The ball ping pongs. Among some FEU players as a shot on goal will be collected once again by the gloves of Acelo. Kim Eugene having some problems in the midfield. Ube will contest. And now Dabalos finds Eugene. This could materialize into something for UP, but they run out of room. Oh, last contact from an FEU player. Davalos for Riasso as she is taken down in the left flank. It's going to be a set piece here. As someone is booked. It is Janli Fontamillas on that hard challenge of Colleen. Riasso will see it right here, those two. Pulling her down. Riasso is back up on her feet. Again, a set piece for the Fighting Maroons in perhaps a very favorable position here. They have not gotten deep into their attacking third that many times. Munich Muring. Player number 10 and... 
Obviously, that headband has been a signature piece of her attire. Go signal is given just two ladies in the wall into the area, but no one makes a fine connection. UP recovered just in time. Four of their defenders already in the final third. No follow-up for FEU on that uh, could have been potential counter. And now there's four of them against a sea of white shirts. They lob one in. This is Junela Albino. Player number 24, FEU. Jazzy, again against Fontamillas. Has to be careful, already booked. A lull here in the play, Kara Cachero for the restart. They send it forward, Kara Cachero. And now FEU, but there is more gallantry from the Fighting Maroons that we can see as we just breached past the one hour mark. 60 minutes have gone by. It is still Far Eastern University with the 1 0 advantage. Layani Kayabyab in the 18th, the only difference of this match. It's been a better effort from the Fighting Maroons the last 10 minutes or so that we can tell Fontamillas to indict Tolentin once again. Fontamillas lobs one into the box. Baroin was there. And another delivery for Fontamillas. Baroin. Getting slightly out of her area. Well, third time be the charm here. They take a different approach here. With a quick one-two, which is just denied by Colleen Acello, the attentive keeper for UP. Tolentin tries to catch her off guard. Into another corner for the Lady Tamaraus. Sixty-second minute here. You know that window slowly, steadily, perhaps closing for the Fighting Maroons. They have to turn things around here. Inside the box. On the second ball, here is the cross. And finally into a goal kick for UP. That was actually Tulabing who got the touch on a header but just couldn't get quite the proper cut. Bora, Riazzo, and again Bora, and that ball just sent out.
Jensen, Pauline Miranda will replace Daniel Joy Napisa. So we are also seeing UP Super Subs check in one by one as they try to equalize Bora. It's met well by Fontamillas, who just shuts that door close on Bora. Two defenders converge on Dabalos. That one goes past Bora and Dow UP. Go deep into their attacking third. FEU for now will be satisfied with those clearances. But UP is attempting something here. 65 minutes in, 25 more. Will FEU be able to preserve this margin? Baro in. Into the middle, just inside of the box. And Lehayan will send it away. Again, UP with some semblance of rhythm here in the second half. It's been a significantly better half for them. 21 minutes in. FEU finally wins it back. This is Magbitang who sends it for Tolentin. What a risky move by Acelo and it pays off. Just steady for Acelo. While the unrushing Tolentin tried to take one. Riaso. Eugene. Through ball. Jazzy Bora. Lehayan just got there a bit quicker. Well, UP's backline has to fall back. They were quite high the last time out. And that set up Magbitang for Tolentin. Some last minute heroics by Acelo, which preserved this scoreline that we have since the 18th minute. Ube. Bora. But they don't have the numbers here, UP. Ube into the middle. And that is met by Altice. Moring unable to control. Baroin does. They send it forward once again. And now FEU. Although UP's defense has re-established. Good recovery on the part of UP and Baroin. Yatko. Defending Miravite. It is poked away. And Baroin. Preventing anything from the rebound. UP might have gotten away with something there. Quickly into the midfield as the whistle is blown. Anto Gonzalez insisting to go quick. But looks like they will retake this.
Coach let them zone. Likewise, livid from their technical area. Sixty-nine minutes. And counting, 20 more to go, plus added time. That is, at the very least, UP looking to equalize. FAU tries to preserve this, perhaps even add a late insurance. But it will all depend on how this match continues to unfold right before our very eyes. The PFF Women's Cup 2022 final, UP and FAU. Bora, Miranda dispossessed, great effort from the midfield for FEU, but an equally great effort from Baroin, just being present right there, Riasso will definitely not get to that on time, as Lehayan You get a bit of a feel here for FEU that, of course, with this game halfway in their bag, they're going to make the most out of the opportunities that they have. And they take a more cautious, more relaxed approach. FEU once again on the offensive, but they didn't have the numbers. It looks like we're going to see a change from the Lady Tamaras, Lennon Cristobal, the player out of Pampanga. Is sent into the action, will get her first touch via a throw-in. Eighteen more minutes for UP to try and equalize, pull one back, pull even. FAU continues to press the same way they've done all match long. Bora to Riasso. But Albino and Doctora as we look at some of the fans here still in attendance from the FAU side. FEU has been keeping this ball in their attacking half. The clock continues to run away. 17 minutes for UP to find something here. And the ball way ahead of Ube from Yatko. Or Miranda rather. Tolentin. Some weird spin into that cross as it sails out. Some of the fans from the UP side, all the way there, extending up to the very end of the PFF National Training Center. A lot of space here, just outside the box. And again, UP finding themselves. Yeah. 
in a precarious situation. The last thing they needed as they still try to come back. Jessamay Lihayan well, if this holds it's going to be two clean sheets for her throughout the playoffs throughout the knockout stages where the pressure is the highest where the stakes are the biggest how about Jessamay Lehayan? and now FEU but clearance was there for UP as they flock. Fifteen minutes and change. The movement for FAU, it has not changed one bit. They continue to attack. They continue to pounce. Put pressure on the Fighting Maroons. The Lady Tamaraos of course let them on. They made just a few changes here. Fontamillas. That ball finds its way into the right flank. They contest for it. Valley on the first touch. That was Tolentin. And now into the left flank. Will the flag stay down? But that's going to be a goal kick for UP. Difficult angle for Tolentin to really make something out of that. And FAU still with possession here. They've kept it to their side. Like we what we've mentioned. PFF General Secretary Attorney Ed Yastanes also part of, of course, those in attendance for this evening. The final match day. UP trailing FEU, who of course, by way of Layani Kayabyab's 18th minute incursion, has the lead. Just a one goal difference for the green and gold. Fast approaching the 77th minute mark. 13 more, a baker's dozen more. Not much aerial into that cross. But FAU somehow still with it. Well, UP. That back line has made Quite a few, several number of clearances, but they couldn't build. Dabalos to Ube. Opportunity for UP as they pull closer. It is Kate Dabalos to set this one in. Well, FEU there. Defensive counterparts, of course. Will not be rattled either. Dabalos. Into traffic for Ube. Someone is down. Play on, says the referee. 
FEU will send this out. Lenlen Cristobal, player number 23 on your screens. Likewise, down on the field. And now Cristobal getting some uh, attention. We'll see that in our replay. Ube and Cristobal. Looks like just the weight of Ube as she fell onto Cristobal and as of course our resident PT PT Wally Javier attending to Cristobal. FEU will be reduced momentarily to ten men once again. But as it stands, they can afford to do so. 80 minutes. A bit of a confusion in the field. Well, there was really no stoppage technically, except for, of course, Cristobal going out. Again, FEU, they will defend this particular instance with 10. Can UP capitalize? Moring will lose it. Just extending that arm. And you can sense the desperation, of course, from the Fighting Maroons. They are behind. And they have about 10 minutes or so to bring us back to how this match begun. Cristobal is back in the field. Tolentin tries to will it past Cachero and a foul as both of them fall down. Of course, the exhaustion already taking an effect. Cachero tries her best to prevent Tolentin from a deep run into that right. Indai Tolentin, you can see on your screens, back up on her feet, but uh, Cara Cachero needing some further help. Well, she gets the uh, ice spray treatment here as uh, Kate Dabalos gives the assist. We will perhaps see more added time in the second half than we saw in the first half. Cachero trying to walk it off. We resume the action. It's going to be a set piece here for FEU. It's going to be three ladies making up that UP wall to try and at least deter Tolentin's field of view. Whistle has been given to Lintin, will deliver. But so compact is that UP defense. Muring receives it well. About seven more minutes here for the Fighting Maroons. Who have no other recourse but to score to send this one into extra time. Double loss. But FEU has remained intact as well. They continue to press high. And now with some space for FEU. Tolentin retrieves. 
against Cachero who has re-entered the pitch. And this bounce will go straight into the midst of Acelo. Well, there is still time here for the Fighting Maroons. Will they be able to pull off a miracle of sorts? Cristobal will try to outrun Dabalos. Well, she came from the substitutes. Looks like there will be two more substitutes entering for UP in just a short while when the opportunity presents itself. But for now, they will have to continue and try to string together, to piece together a good sequence. 85 minutes in, and whistle is blown. Moring receives the brunt of that. That was Moring and Albino. And Albino. Riazo will be replaced. Martina Torres, a forward, will enter. And then Alex Lagman for Kamea Mangrobang. Four more minutes and change here. The UP faithful on your screens. They still dream. They still believe. But time is not on the side. FEU make the connection here. Dabalos will shadow. Leave it up for Acelo. And Eliza Ube apologetic. She knew that will not escape the sharp eyes of our referee, Timothy De Castro. Clear as day, Eliza Ube, the extension of the left forearm. As we take a good look at uh, well, BT Wally once again. It's been quite a busy match for him. So much so that, of course, uh, us here at the uh, PFF Women's Cup, as we see again the fans rooting for the FEU side. It looks like this will be the last substitution for UP. Three more minutes in. Well, again, PT Wally has been heralded as uh, the de facto man of the match. Eliza Nicole Narido, player number 39 on your screens. As we have been mentioning that this venue is filled. Far Eastern University are on the verge of winning the PFF Women's Cup 2022. Will UP be able to pull off a miracle right here? Time is not on the side.
We restart the play. Acela fumbles a bit. But the whistle is blown. A mad scramble. Inside of the goal area. We'll see that right here. Jockeying for position as uh, Cristobal got a uh, bit too physical. So UP has a minute and whatever amount of added time. To try and pull one back and send us to an extension. But as it looks, Far Eastern University have been composed, have been in control, and could be very well on their way to a championship right here. What an evening of football. What a weekend of football. We have the Filipinas sweeping Papua New Guinea in their pair of friendlies. 5-1 the first time around. 9-0 during the rematch. And of course, tomorrow night, Philippine time. Three minutes of added time have uh, just been announced. Three more minutes for the Fighting Maroons. Time continues to run away for the Fighting Maroons. Far Eastern University will not take their chances. Cristobal. On the enthusiastic try. Hit Albino in the midsection with the ball. Inadvertently, of course. Janela Albino shakes this one off. Getting some words of encouragement from Indai Tolentin. Tolentin. And that has got to be frustrating for Alisa Ube. This, if anything, should be a send off as her boots just met the face of Cristobal. And she is done for the night. To make matters worse. The problems compound here for the Fighting Maroons. Ube is out. She had a yellow card earlier. That will definitely be nothing short of a direct red. Well, definitely our officials will make up for the time lost here. But Far Eastern University Definitely feeling it right now. Well, it should be sealed for them. It's only a matter of a few minutes. Our uh, hard working photographers also standing by Pam Puri, RM2, uh, Mia Montaire, all here dedicating their time. As, uh, yes, that was Len Len Cristobal, the substitute. Understatement to say. She's been involved from the moment 
She who has inserted into the field. Set piece for FAU as we return. Only two ladies making up that wall, if anything. He sends it straight into the box. And that should be the insurance goal. Far Eastern University double their lead in injury time. And they seal the championship right there. Laika Jane Cuenco. UP has collapsed. And Far Eastern University are on their way to lifting the PFF Women's Cup trophy. Laika Cuenco uncontested. And this should be over soon. The confirmation whistle has sounded. Far Eastern University are your PFF Women's Cup 2022 winners. They take home the championship. They best UP. They replicate the result from the elimination round. And they have all the reasons to celebrate. Far Eastern University, one of the most successful programs in collegiate women's football will be the champions of the PFF Women's Cup 2022. What a run it was for them. The Lady Tamaraus, nothing to be ashamed of for University of the Philippines. Just trying to be one of the contenders, not only here, but also in the collegiate football scene. But this night belongs to Far Eastern University. Layani Kayabyab in the 18th. And then Laika Cuenco strikes in extra time. Far Eastern University are victorious. You had an overall sense that as this match began, it was all Far Eastern University. And they were once again methodical in their approach. And they executed that to perfection. They pressured the University of the Philippines. And on this very lapse, the opening goal was scored. Layani Kayabyab. An errant pass from the defense. They would hold on to that advantage. And there were not many opportunities for UP throughout this one. Far Eastern University kept pounding on, pouncing on every opportunity they got. What an evening it was. And once again, in the end, it was Far Eastern University. Colleen Asello made a good account of herself. Some quality saves throughout. But in the end, that wall just continued to give for UP. A well-deserved win for FEU. This was the insurance goal that capped what was already inevitable. Far Eastern University, Laika Jane Cuenco. As we return to our real-time view, Far Eastern University. 
are jubilant as they should be. We'll send you over to the field as we are about to talk to some of our championship players. And we're here with Laika Cuenca, who of course scored that marginal goal in extra time. Like alam mong na kayo, 1-0, talagang pinrotektahan nyo, lamang nyo. But in that second goal na na-score mo, anong pakiramdam na talagang uh, sinil, sinil nyo na yung championship? Um, first of all po, um, nag, ano po talaga kami, as in sinet po namin yung mind namin na um, manalo dito. And we, we, play as a, we, we play as a team po. And hindi po namin pinabayaan na kahit 1-0 lang, hindi kami contented, contento doon. And we push ourselves na kailangan natin ito kumakuha, hindi lang to chamba, hindi lang to ganyan. We, we push ourselves na parang kailangan natin makagol pa para mapakita sa kanila na hindi lang chamba lahat ng ginawa namin. Yan po. Speaking of which, like, talaga hindi kayo nagpabaya throughout the game nung uh, first Win nyo sa UP in the elimination round, ganito rin yung score. Uh, Inexpect nyo na ba na mas maging uh, explosive yung kanilang, syempre gusto na makabawi sa inyo, paano nyo talagang nilimitahan na mangyari yun ngayong laro? Um, yes po, lahat naman ng team parang nagdo-double effort pagdating sa mga ganyan po. And um, inexpect na namin ang magdo-double effort sila, so hindi kami magpapakapante na natalo namin sila last game. So we push ourselves na hindi lang hanggang dito kaya namin, kailangan pa na, kaya, kaya pa namin ang uh, angatan or higitan pa yung mga performance namin last games. And natuto kami sa mga, mga losers and winners namin nilang mga past games. Like alam ko marami kang gusto kong uh, batiin on behalf of the entire FEU team. Sige, ito na yung chance mo para bumate sa lahat ng nanonood sa atin. Um, thank you po sa pagsusuporta nyo sa amin and thank you kasi andyan dyan po kayo palagi lang susuport sa amin. Thank you sa family ko and sa lahat po nanonood ngayon and um, thank you Karoben. Yan po. We'll bring you the awarding ceremony of the PFF Women's Cup 2022 final when we return. And we're back here at the PFF Women's Cup 2022. Kasama natin ngayon, the winning, the champion coach, Coach Let Dimson. Coach, you're no stranger to success. Uh, what was the uh, key to the victory today, tonight? Uh, actually, yung hard work lang talaga. And then teamwork with the team. So we, we prepare for it. So before pa lang mag-start ang Women's Cup, so sinabi ko na sa kanila yung directions ng team. So since nakikita ko yung potential ng every player, so sinabi ko, I swear to dahil nagkaroon ako ng ganitong player, yung character nila, paano sila lumalaban. At again, yung dedications na binibigay nila into the game. So walang, walang aray, walang sakit. So but again, 100%, when they are inside the field, they fight, they finish the game 100, full-hearted, 100%. Coach, lagi nating binabanggit sa broadcast. Lagi natin binabagkin sa broadcast na paghahandaan nyo ito para sa isang malaking tournament. 
no sa pagdating sa mga college teams. Sa tingin niyo kayo yung may lamang given na napanalo niyo tong cup na to among the teams na nagpe-prepare ngayon para sa UAAP of course. So mahirap sabihan but again we're looking for that and then since hindi pa namin nakikita yung Lasal team so we're preparing for Lasal but again yung two months preparations is hindi natin alam kung anong mangyayari with the other teams preparation. So that's why yung focus pa rin namin is to improve yung mga lapses namin during this tournament kung ano yung kailangan namin i-develop kung ano yung mga um, Uh, aspects in a, in in the play in the game yung kailangan namin i-improve We will bring you the awarding ceremony of the PFF Women's Cup 2022 in just a short while Just a short while, ladies and gentlemen, the awarding ceremony for the PFF Women's Cup 2022 will unfold. The setup, of course, is right there in the middle of the pitch. PFF General Secretary, Attorney Edwin Castanas, of course, gracing us all here. Senator Pia Cayetano, herself an athlete, herself a staunch advocate of women's sports and women's rights in general, in attendance with us tonight to grace us in the awarding ceremony. The match officials get recognized, of course. No sport, no game, no match, no tournament. Possible without referees. And not just the referees, of course, who officiated in this match, but the entire refereeing crew and pool that we've had for the last two months have done such a remarkable job to make sure everything is in control and that for these ladies from all the eight teams are able to play fair and play the beautiful game the right way. The University of the Philippines are formally announced as the first runners-up. Coach Anto Gonzalez and the program that he's had for both sides actually just 
not just the women's, but even the men's. But of course, spotlight tonight belongs to his ladies. As we will get a good look at each one of them. The ladies from Diliman University of the Philippines. And just the outpouring of emotions here. It's been two and a half years since competitive 11 aside football. And obviously, these players will go back and continue preparing for their collegiate. Tournaments in the second semester. UPA force to be reckoned with in the UAAP scene. And uh, as they always say, part of their mantra is nowhere to go but up. Well, of course, UP again made the final after they beat Kaya FC Luilo in the semifinals. That went to penalty shootout. And 5-4 was the final. A save by Colleen Acelo. A winning penalty by Jazzy Bora. We're also getting a good look at, uh, of course, PFF Women's Cup Commissioner Coach Priscilla Aging Rubio there in pink. Part of the picture, of course. UP received their silver medals. The worthy runners up. A good run they made. Once again, the University of the Philippines will watch out for them. They'll be among the contenders for the UAAP football tournaments. But of course, this night belongs only to one. After these photo opportunities, this night belongs only to the victorious. But before that, of course, we will be handing out the individual awards. After two months, of course, the players from eight teams who have made impact. It is only fitting that they also get recognized.
Shella Kadag, of course, the top goal scorer, 15 goals throughout this tournament. Player number 24 for Kaya FC Iloilo. Always a threat to opposing teams. Getting recognized. And now Colleen Asello rewarded for her efforts is adjudged as the best goalkeeper of the tournament. Definitely a worthy consolation for not just herself but UP in general as she receives the trophy still with her mitts at that making that crucial stop against Ina Palacios, someone who she said is a role model she looks up to. Jennifer Baroin is the best defender. Well, although UP conceded two goals against FEU earlier, Jen Baroin individually also had such a remarkable performance. And then back in the semifinals, making sure Kaya did not find the back of the net. And for that, she has been recognized as well. Well, definitely the best midfielder is none other than that Woman on your screens, Charissa Bebe Lemoran. What a distributor she is from the midfield. She's been quite the sponge for Kaya FC Iloilo. She has not only connected the back to the front, assisting, scoring, covering ground. And Bebe Lemoran is your best midfielder. We're down to the final award of the evening. In Dai Tulentin, player number five, as her teammates rejoice. Player number five, Junessa in Dai Tulentin, the most valuable player of the PFF Women's Cup 2022. What a build up for the UAAP season that's about to follow. A photo opportunity, some of the best individuals of the PFF Women's Cup 2022. From left to right on your screens, Colleen Asello, the best goalkeeper. Jen Baroin, the best defender. Yunesa Tolentin in the middle, of course, 
the most valuable player. The best midfielder is Bebe Lemoran. And of course, the best scorer, Sela Kadag. And now it is time to recognize the team that's shown the most after two months of intense competition. Far Eastern University. Those gold medals will one by one be wrapped around their necks. Far Eastern University are champions of the PFF Women's Cup. What a run it was. Led by no less than Coach Let Dimson, a winner in Philippine women's football. No stranger to success has coached in definitely all the levels of competition, national and international. And now Far Eastern University make their way one by one. Jessame Lehayan, Erma Balakua, Indaito Lintin, Janli Fontamillas, Laika Cuenco, Kat Magbitang, Kaila Doctora, Layani Kayabyab, Junela Miravite, Jen Tulabing, Regine Rebosura, Liliana Artilio, Christine Julieza, Maria Angela Fornea, Carmela Altice, Elna Rose Bongol, Franz Gayapa, Nick Drea Duran, Milet Tuliao, Mary Lou Suriano, Len Cristobal, Lilibet Ansabor, Sandy Batunting. Also Lubetania and On Rubia, one by one. Far Eastern University are PFF Women's Cup champions for the year 2022. As competitive football made its way back to the new normal, it is FEU. The brave squad from Moraita was too tall. They take their photos, they strike their best poses. And all that's left to do is to receive the championship trophy. There you have it for Eastern University, our PFF Women's Cup 2022 champions.
What a night it was for Philippine women's football. And on behalf of the entire PFF Women's Cup, we thank you all for your support in the last two months. On behalf of the PFF Women's Cup technical team, the referees, the general coordinators, match commissioners, referee assessors, our media production crew, the camera crew, of course, our directors here, social media photographers, and everyone making the entirety of the PFF Women's Cup. As I always say, wherever you are, wherever you're from, this has been Levi Verora, and we'll see you at the games.